All right, all right, you know what time it is. Neil Ratnar, Rock Doc here with a story. This past week, singer, songwriter, and composer Gary Wright, known for his work with the band Spooky Tooth, but best known for his songs Dreamweaver and Love is Alive, celebrated his 79th birthday. What you may not know is that Gary and George Harrison were good buddies, and today I thought I'd tell you a few things about Gary and his relationship with George that you might not know. And as usual, a little background first. All right, so Gary was a child actor who made his debut at seven years old on the TV show Captain Video and his Video Rangers. Anybody remember that? <laughs> he also appeared on TV and radio commercials, and eventually he got the role on Broadway as Florence Henderson's son in the musical Fanny. Now, during his high school years in New Jersey, Gary led a few different rock and roll bands, one of which scored a record deal, but their single went nowhere. So Gary decided to pursue his other dream of becoming a doctor, something I, of course, can relate to. <laughs> now, Wright enrolled at the College of William and Mary as a pre-med student, finished his undergraduate studies, and got accepted and attended Downstate Medical School for a year. He was interested in psychiatry and there was a good program in Germany. So he decided he would move to Germany to finish up his psychiatric studies. But once in Germany, he got seriously into music again, gave up on the idea of being a doctor, formed a band and toured Europe. All right. Now, it was in Oslo, Norway in 1967 uh, on a gig where Gary's band was supporting traffic that he met Chris Blackwell, president of Island Records. Very cool dude, man. Blackwell invited Wright to London to join a band which soon changed its name to Spooky Tooth. And Wright was the joint lead vocalist and Hammond organ player. Three albums with uh, Spooky Tooth, critical acclaim, but limited commercial success. So Gary left the band, he left Spooky Tooth in 1970 to begin a solo career. Now, at the same time, he became friends with in-demand session player Klaus Vorman. Now, if you listened to my story a couple days ago, you know all about Klaus Vorman. And through Klaus, uh, Wright was invited to play piano on George Harrison's 1970 triple album, All Things Must Pass. Well, Gary and George became musical collaborators and they worked together again on the 1973 Harrison follow-up, Living in the Material World, and Gary co-wrote If You Believe for George Harrison's 79 self-titled album, as well as playing keyboards on George's 87 Comeback Smash Cloud 9. Now, not only did the two collaborate musically, they became really good friends and shared thoughts and ideas and it was the sharing that ultimately resulted in Gary's hit song, Dreamweaver. According to Wright, in 1972, my friend George Harrison invited me to accompany him on a trip to India. A few days before we left, he gave me a copy of the book, Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda. Now, needless to say, the book inspired me deeply and I became totally fascinated with Indian culture and philosophy. While reading more of the writings of Yogananda, I came across a poem called God, God, God. One of the lines in the poem referred to the idea of the mind weaving dreams. And the thought immediately occurred to me, weaver of dreams, dream weaver. <laughs> so I wrote it down in my journal of song titles and I forgot about it. Several months passed, and one weekend while in the English countryside, I picked up my journal and I came across the title Dreamweaver. Feeling inspired, picked up my acoustic guitar and began writing. The song was finished in an hour. The lyrics and music seemed to have flowed out of me as if it was written by an unknown source. Something I've heard so many times from great songwriters. It's like they're vessels and the, the words and music come through them from some collective unconscious that they're able to tap into. At any rate, the tune went on to sell over 2 million copies 
Gary and George remained close. And after George died, Gary said, I always admired his creativity and sincerity. He was a true genius and probably one of the most creative people I'd ever met. All right. <laughs> Gary Wright, George Harrison. So that's my story. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't know the songs A Dream Weaver and Love is Alive, check it out. Check out Summer Wright's early stuff on Spooky Tooth at one point uh he played with mick ronson from foreigner who also was in spooky too so so there's some interesting connections way back when all right i'll have more stories as time goes on you know where to find me around the internet and as i always tell you always remember to keep on rocking all right i'll see you somewhere real soon bye for now